Inshallah reminder for myself in these days of difficulty and we see mankind at war and Allah show us within ourself and upon the horizon. Within the self requires somebody to honestly be working upon themselves, evaluating themselves at every moment analyzing their character and trying to subdue the wildness, the badness, the bad character and as a result the inside is much more difficult to see and then we see the outside where Allah shows the haywan and the wildness of people that begin in the last days immense wars, immense difficulties. The, the, the factor of life is, is not of any value to anyone more than the price of a bullet, the sanctity of the soul is of no value to people and becomes a great difficulty and azab upon the earth. Azab is a divine difficulty and punishment that God creates a, a punishment in which mankind will cleanse each other by the hands of those whom have no mercy and better to clean ourselves before God sends somebody, Allah sends somebody to clean us with no mercy. And this way of tariqah is not an easy way, its teachings and its realities require honest effort. And when we talk about the ulul amr and our life is to exemplify the reality of the people of amr and command and their reality from alif, mim, ra that the reason they are the people of the command is that from izzat Allah, izzatullah the majesty and might of Divinely Presence is flowing and it flows to Izzat Rasul that majestic might and power from the Divinely Presence must flow always to the heart of the Messenger of God, the representative of Allah The only one who can contain that might and that majesty of Allah is Muhammadun Rasulullah and from that might and that majesty it flows to ulul amr and these are Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul, Izzat Mu'min that they're perfect but they took a path towards perfection and as a result of their sincerity Allah grant them to carry that command and the of and Allah books and the tariqahs was to exemplify and to move towards that reality. That why our path is based on samina wa tana, that we heard and we obeyed. As a result of that obedience the reality of hearing begins to open. When the physical ears are submitting the spiritual ears are more powerful. They hear the command, when the outer ear has been tamed and disciplined the inner ear's reality begins to open. Means that for the outer senses are going to open the power within the heart. When the ears are opening and they're hearing, they're disciplining their ears, trying their best to be continuously physically listening physically absorbing and spiritually training themselves to listen, to listen, to listen. As a result of that it begins to open their spiritual hearing and spiritual lights that enter in to the reality of hearing which is the door for the soul. When the hearing opens the door of the soul begins to crack open. Right? Because through hearing and the secret of al-sami, 
the shaykhs can pull the soul out. That's why when they play the recitations and the nasheeds, the salawats, the dhikr, all of that allows the insan, the person to reach a state of ecstasy, tranquility and as a result of the secret of hearing it lowers that guard or lock upon the hearing and the soul can come out to begin to experience. The more power they are and the more powerful their hearing by hearing of submission, the more powerful their hearing with their consciousness and Divine submission. This is carry the command, to carry the character, to carry the orders, to carry all of that reality. As a result Allah gave to their hearing, physical hearing and then spiritual hearing. As a result of spiritual hearing means they hear the strongest by their inspiration. And then the one whom inspiration through his spiritual hearing is more most powerful then is the one whom speaks because he speaks on their behalf. And this is the discipline of, of this process of speaking means these attributes are all mixed and not the flow that people would understand. So means that to hear the physical ears and discipline is a training to open the spiritual hearing. When the spiritual he hearing begins to open then the reality of the soul is coming out, the spiritual experiences with the soul is coming out. Then later they go into their spiritual scene. They discipline their eyes, not looking at bad, cleansing how, how the whole world is filled with bad, learning how to cleanse their eyes. Once they discipline the physical eyes then they begin to train by the closing of their eyes their spiritual vision begins to open. But for tonight the reality of the nafs and hearing. That's why the way and this was the way that Prophet established above all other nations. The superior superiority of the Muhammadan nation is their sense of Sifat al-Sami. It's not a, a fashion that Allah described, oh I love them above every other nation that I gave to this nation because they're all handsome but because of the immense reality that Allah dressed them with Sifat al-Sami. And their nation's logo or the nation's understanding was Samina wa Atana, that we have heard the command and our life is to obey. And this was what their whole struggle and every test that came to them, every every fought, fought, fight that they fought, every issue in their lives. There was no personal time, there was no, oh this is my family time so I can do as I, I want and, and I go to the masjid, that's a masjid time and then I go to work I can, I can be a… some sink. It's all time for Allah. Allah works the most. Because people come to the dhikr with a fake character. What's really happening at home is something different. Allah works with them the most at work. How they act, how they listen, how they integrate, how, how they're conducting themselves. That's where Allah is dressing and watching and observing. And then everybody puts on a facade when they come to the center and appear to be working on themselves. But we're not fooling Allah means that our life, every aspect of our life is under this tarbiyah. Because people will say and, and, and people near the shaykh will say, oh this is family time, this is this, there's no time. For Allah there is no time, there is no distinction and every moment is an opportunity in which to improve and to achieve. And if like no. Rida and happiness, we would consider that a dead, a dead time, stale time. Means only time is to improve in Allah's way. There is no other time. Any other time is a wasted dead time. 
So it means every aspect of our life about even this spring bank. As a result, we take a path in which to diagnose ourselves. So when we're meditating, we're continuously trying to observe what is my state of hearing? And then your interaction through the tariqah, once you enter into the tariqah Allah activates everything. People are overly conscious about their health and their Google MDs. If they have a cough they start to Google it, if they have an itch they Google it, if they have something wrong with them they Google it. Instead of worrying about that garbage we should meditate on every aspect of our character. That exactly when something and someone says something, why does it invoke such a reaction? If you can discipline and understand that reaction, you can begin to open the reality of hearing. Means when you talk to people and you say that you don't like something, and people begin to have a dialogue, immediately the nafs of somebody doesn't like to be told anything. That at that stage is a very dangerous nafs, a nafs that not capable of listening to any type of comment, any type of suggestion, any type of command. How are you going to follow the command of Allah How are you going to follow the command of Prophet Or how could you even tolerate to be around ulul am when your nafs is like a ferocious beast that you can't even put your finger in the cage to pet it. Nafs amara, this is a dangerous nafs. That it, it is tolerating of nothing, of no one, of any type of comment. That's not the way, that's not the way of tariqah. People feel that they may have a different time, a different time to react, well I do like that at work. But when I sit and listen to the talks I don't get angry but <laughs> that's not the thing. The talk is, is for us to take home and now the homework the actual product begins in the house, Allah makes everything upside down with the family, with the kids, with work, with the job, with, with the fellow work people. Everything in our environment will become the testing ground for what was learned. And the discipline of Samina Watana is that, I take upon myself to be quiet, to remain quiet. When somebody is commenting on something that I should be doing, you should be like this, you should be like that, you have to reach a state in which to submit to yourself, I am under tarbiyah and training. As a result of my training that I know I'm in, I'm going to remain silent. And somebody's going to say, you should do like that, you should do like this, you should do like that. And you write for yourself, stay quiet, don't you dare answer anything. If you answer back that test will repeat itself. And many people they live their life like Groundhog Day. There's a movie called Groundhog Day where every day the man goes through his whole life, he doesn't accomplish what's necessary and seven o'clock in the morning he's exactly wakes up in the same position, the same bed. And now the same day will happen again for him. And the significance of something like that or movie like that and understanding like that is Allah is teaching for us, uh, either you're insane and you signed up to be in a, a day of every day the same day means you're not passing. And we said the example of insanity is that you do the same thing every day, every holy day, every day and you expect a different result means then you're insane. 
And that's why the common reference to shaykh says, are you crazy? Because it is an insanity in their eyes that every time it's the same response, every holy night same crazy characters they come out of the woodwork. At some point in time humans will grow up and say, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to take a path towards perfection and Allah will test me everywhere. Allah's testing ground is this creation, not the masjid or only the zikr or only the YouTube channel when I'm sitting on the couch, but my entire existence is going to be tested by my Lord and He teaches me to remain silent. If I'm the one whom is taking a path and I'm not a ulul am, if I'm somebody on a path towards the ulul am, then I'm the one whom should be listening. And I listen, and I listen, and I listen. I don't have to like it, I don't have to agree with it, but I have to remain silent through it. If not, nothing can be achieved. So then no hearing, no submission, there's no soul activity. Anyone who claims that they have a soul activity, it's from the jinn and something playing with them. It's not an easy life, it's not an easy process. For that soul to be released and the lock that shaitan has, he has three locks on insan that he has to safeguard. You know between shaitan and the arsh are three locks. And Allah said, we put a lock upon their hearing. So means then this subject tonight is how to relieve and release that lock. Shaitan knows and he doesn't want people to receive and to relieve that lock. And as a result of not hearing and not following and submitting, he's actually puts a lot of marks on them. So when shaitan begin to mark people's ears, with all sorts of hoops and ropes and chains and all these things. It's shaitan showing that, I have their ears not Allah because he puts his nails, the ifrit, their neck and rides them on their neck from behind with the nails and begin to mark. their ears to show that these are my creatures, they listen to me. So ulul am their life was a continuous bombardment, continuous testing, continuous state of difficulty testing. We said before that they would put the murid in a room and begin arguments with people and insulting arguments and the murid had to stay silent and keep his connection. Not to answer, not to say anything, remain silent. Take the humiliation, whatever it is, keep quiet, keep quiet. And many witnessed, even the shaykh sending all sorts of attacks and all sorts of insults and all sorts of comments in the talks and the murid remained silent and silent and silent, going strong in their tafakkur and their contemplation and that is a deep reality. And they achieved that over many years of testing and tormenting and difficulties and they remain silent to much difficulty, much sort of oppression. And only through that oppression of difficulty Allah accepted their du'as and raised their station. So there was a hikmah in all of that, if you remain silent and don't take your, your, your right with your mouth. Stay and remain quiet, do your meditation, you're here to subdue your beast. So Allah will bring you to a state of death before death and then the hikmah is that, Ya Rabbi this abuse even though it's testing, grant me your nadar, grant me your oceans of power, grant me the nearness and proximity of Prophet means you had something to ask, you had a credit. And with that credit they were able to draw near to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad 
means the immense hikmah of controlling the ears, controlling what you're hearing, controlling how people are commenting, saying, doing and our path is of no concern. My heart is to stay connected, my heart is to bring down my nafs, let myself to absorb the ability to take comments, take what people are going to say. As a result they become stronger and stronger and stronger. And now when people are told to do something they do the exact opposite. You say that you were doing all these things, now do it this way that I suggest. And this is important, as soon that's why it shows nobody can take the command of a shaykh. So the ulul am who reach that they're but a few. They're not uh, a dime a dozen, they're not on every corner. Say, can I go to the zikr here or be with some ulul ams? It's not like that. The, 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 the difficulty in which they endured for Allah to open their hearing and the amount of humiliation and testing that they took for Allah to open their hearing, as a result open their soul, open their firasal, open their connection and their proximity to that ocean of power was immense. And as a result of the sickness of that difficulty to understand that as soon as somebody is doing something and you come and talk to them, do it like this. Immediately because they're not at that level and doesn't seem like they're trying to even achieve that level of amr, immediately they take that suggestion and now it becomes an immense difficulty for them, that's the danger. As soon as a shaykh gives something for them to do, give them something, you do like this, do like that, do like this, that suggestion now comes into their mind and now begin to play with them. Well, why did he say like that? Why do I have to do it like that? What does it have to be? Because the mind is still by and as a result of any type of order, command or coming to the person, they allow it to be mixed with shaitan and then become an immense sort of fitna within their reality. They sit and begin to battle, why is it like that, why is it like that? Some that their character is so bad, not only they hear something, then they begin to come against it, no, no, no. Then they'll even give a dalil to come to attack you back which is the worst of people. That they take something, they not only chew on it, they become partner with shaitan on it and then find something and a lineup to attack you back. And this wasn't about trying to attack Allah and to attack Muhammadun Rasulullah and definitely not the ulul am. This path was about being nothing in which you are domesticated and not a wild dog. As a result of being domesticated they take, they take and as soon as they, they beg in their heart, Ya Rabbi like Ashab al kaf let me to be that dog that takes these difficulties, dress me with haybah until one day they reach where they'll be told, now the commands will begin to come to you. And on top of their life they will fulfill those commands within a moment. That their whole wujud is about fulfilling the command that coming to them. Regardless of popular, not popular, who likes it, who doesn't like it, there's no democracy in Islam. There's no voting, we have no board, we have no president to tell us what to do on a committee, on an executive board. This is by order of Allah order of Sayyidina Muhammad and order of ulul am come to the heart, firm they'll move. But anyone else if you even just give a suggestion, they'll take the suggestion and the danger is then they begin to listen to it with shaitan, then they begin to come against it and they stop everything that they were doing and just sit back. And that's why that station is not easy to achieve. 
That station is not for you to think, not for you to think how to do it, not for you to analyze it, not for you to regurgitate it within the mind, but clearly hear it and make it to happen. And that's rare, that's rare in these days. And that's why the testing and, and the interaction with people and the only reason they're describing it so that everybody can go back and begin to look at their own interaction. Whether they heard a command or they heard the teachings and they heard the teaching and they start to battle within themselves, why is like that? Why is like this? Why is like that? Already you're losing that battle because your, your sense was supposed to be, I heart and move in it in its reality. If you're going to take it and bring it up to your brain to analyze it with shaitan because shaitan the nafs and the, the, the bad character are up in the head, then everything will be regurgitated, many things will be stopped. The character of those people they stop what they're doing and they stop the whole process. And if they're involved with the tariqah the danger of that is that they can bottleneck every process. As soon as they have responsibilities. This is the, the danger of these people and their character because as soon as they have responsibilities and they're listening, they're not trying to achieve to be like Ulur Am that we heard it, we'll do it. We heard it, we'll do it. That's why the opportunity to come and draw near to the shaykh is to hear it and to do it. But they begin to hear, debate and then stop. And then the opposite of Am would be what? What's the opposite of following the command? Whatever the word would be, it's the opposite of ulurahm. <laughs> the people who take and they sit on it and stop it. And the worst are the ones who then take it, try to argue it in their mind and then begin to try to fight it back and attack with it. So it means this level of ulurahm and this level of submission took an immense amount of difficulty. And as a result of their character they listen, they listen, they listen until they reach a state in which their sincerity was rewarded by Allah and what comes to them then is accomplished. And the path is based on trying to reach that reality. Every opportunity that we're given whether you order something and it didn't come the time you want, the way you want, five days late from what you want. Everything's about sabr, patience, have good character. Whether you're watching a talk and you don't like the information in the talk, it comes counter to what you thought from the talk, all of it is to absorb, train the, the, the nafs. Of course there's going to be many things in all these teachings coming against everyone because the nafs is like a wild beast. And Allah is throwing the darts at everyone's nafs and as a result of the one whom can hold themselves and control their beast to reach a state of death in which their bad character just die, just go down, subdue it, subdue it as if they hold back their bad character so that the beatific reality of the soul can begin to shine in which everything that flows to them Allah sends to them their isharat and their whole wujud is to make sure that it's accomplished. That character is then supported by Allah In the jaa Nasrullahi, when Nasrullah and Allah's support come, Ya Surukullahu Nasran Aziza that Allah even describes in Ayatul Kareem that we support you with a tremendous support. Means that character in which wants to fulfill the Divine decree then is an immensely supported character. And the other is an immense struggle. If we don't understand and learn our system then we never achieve the realities that are being described. And in a world right now we started off Allah's cleaning everyone. Better that we clean ourselves, our wild character, Allah can do it a different way. Allah can send a difficulty and someone else will clean that person through oceans of difficulty and is opening all over the world now. But our path was about, Ya Rabbi I don't need to be 
in a punishment to learn then I'm trying my best myself to discipline my bad character. <laughs> my, and the tarbiyah and the power that you and bring and exalt the goodness and inshaAllah bring about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad في طريقة نشبندية العليا وسائر سداتنا وصدقينا الفاتحة